Hello, it's great to see you guys again. Let's have fun with Miss Lily and me. Hi kids. Every February, people in the United States celebrate Black History Month. Do you know the stories and origins of this important month? Join us on a journey through time to learn about the people who shape African American history through different questions and guess them all. Yeah! This is the first person. Some call me the father of the peanut, for I discovered 300 useful things made of the peanut. Who am I? George Washington Carver Once upon a time, there was a man named George Washington Carver. He was born into slavery but went on to become one of the most famous scientists. In America, Carver was fascinated by plants and spent his entire life studying them. Two thousand years later. He found ways to use peanuts, sweet potatoes, and soybeans to make all sorts of things like paint, soap, and even gasoline. But that's not all. Carver was also a teacher and loved to share his knowledge with others. He believed that education was the key to a better life and he inspired many young people to follow their dreams just like he did. So, the next time you munch on a peanut butter sandwich or use a product made from soybeans, Remember the amazing George Washington Carver and all the wonderful things he did. He was the first African American to have a national park named after him. You can visit the park and his monument in Missouri. Hey, Miss Lily, can we go see the George Washington Carver monument, please? Of course, Matt. Let's grab your favorite peanut and have a picnic. Yeah! I led the slaves to freedom on my railroad, but I have never conducted a train. I led the way for others, but always traveled at night. I was born into slavery, but I am now remembered for bravery. Who am I? Harriet Tubman she was born into slavery but knew she deserved to be free. So, she made a daring escape and became a conductor on the Underground Railroad, helping other slaves escape to freedom too. Harriet was brave and smart, always finding ways to keep her passengers safe on their journey. She even became a spy for the Union Army during the Civil War using her cunning to gather important information. She spent the rest of her life fighting for their freedom and women's rights. So, the next time you hear someone say they're a real life hero, think of Harriet Tubman, who truly lived a life filled with bravery and kindness. Her knowledge of the local flora in Maryland led her to find a cure for Union, troops suffering from dysentery. Whoa! Whoa! How cool is she, knowing all about herbology? She's a total green thumb. No kidding. What a talented woman. Born into slavery, I became an evangelist, abolitionist, women's rights activist, author in 19th century. Who am I? Sojourner Truth. She was born into slavery but escaped to freedom and became a famous speaker. Sojourner spoke out for women's rights and against slavery and even went head to head with President Abraham Lincoln. Despite never learning to read or write, she gave speeches without any notes and even authored her own biography. Sojourner never gave up fighting for what was right and will always be remembered as a hero for justice and equality. Can you imagine giving a speech without any notes? Just relying on your own voice and message? That's what Sojourner Truth did. Whoa! I couldn't agree more. She shows us that with determination and passion, anyone can make a difference. The first African-American Supreme Court in the U.S. history was me. Who am I? <laughs> C. 
Thurgood Marshall. He was a lawyer who fought for civil rights, and he even argued a case in front of the Supreme Court that helped end segregation in public schools. Thurgood was a trailblazer, becoming the first African-American Supreme Court Justice. He spent his life working to make sure everyone was treated fairly under the law and his efforts helped to shape America into a more equal society. This super smart and brave man will always be remembered as a champion of justice and equality. Do you know that his parents wanted him to become a dentist? If he had done that, we would have had Thurgood Marshall the dentist, not Thurgood Marshall the Supreme Court. <laughs> <laughs> I led the famed March on Washington for Jobs and Freedom on August 28, 1963. My I have a dream speech is a evergreen. Who am I? Martin Luther King Jr. Martin Luther King Jr. is one of the most important leaders in American history. He fought for civil rights and equality, using his powerful voice and peaceful protests to bring about change. Martin dreamed of a world where everyone was treated equally, no matter the color of their skin. He gave speeches that inspired millions, like his famous I Have a Dream speech where he talked about his vision for a better future. Thanks to Martin's bravery and unwavering commitment to justice, America is a more equal place today. He will always be remembered as a hero who made a difference and changed the world. A small fact about him. He was jailed nearly 30 times. I know more facts about him. His birth name was not Martin Luther King J.R.B., and he attended college at the age of 15. That's right. There are more interesting facts about him, but we can discuss them later. Let's move on to the next quiz, okay? Yes. All U.S. flight schools rejected me because I was a black and woman. Later, I became the first African-American woman to have an international pilot's license. Who am I? Bessie Coleman. Buckle up, we're going for a ride with Bessie Coleman. She was an amazing pilot who soared through the skies during a time when not many women, let alone African American women, were flying planes. Bessie was fearless and didn't let anyone tell her she couldn't do something just because of her race or gender. She traveled to France to get her pilot's license because flying schools in the U.S. wouldn't accept her. Bessie was an inspiration to all, showing that with determination and hard work, anyone can reach for the skies. She broke barriers and paved the way for future generations of women and people of color to pursue their dreams. Let's give it up for Bessie Coleman, the queen of the skies, fact. She learned French and attended the Cauldron Brothers School of Aviation in La Crotta, France, where she obtained an international pilot's license within a year of enrolling. If I learn how to fly a plane now, will I have an international pilot's license next year? Of course not. Kid, you're only nine, but you can be a pilot when you're an adult. Just remember to work hard. Yes, I will be a pilot and fly in the sky. I was the first black American child attending a previously all-white elementary school. Who am I? Ruby Bridges. Ruby Bridges is a brave young girl who made history. Ruby was just six years old when she became the first African-American student to attend an all-white school in the South. Ruby faced a lot of resistance and even had to be escorted to school by federal marshals because of angry protesters. But she never gave up and with her courage and determination, she helped to desegregate schools and make a better future for all kids. Did you know that she was accompanied by a few U.S. marshals for her safety? One of the marshals said later she showed a lot of courage 
She never cried. She didn't whimper. She just marched along like a little soldier. And we're all very, very proud of her. Wow! Ruby Bridges was only six years old and she already made history. The U.S. Army never had a black general before me. Who am I? Benjamin Oliver Davis Sr. He was a trailblazer in the world of aviation. He was the first African-American to be promoted to the rank of brigadier. General, he spent nearly 50 years in military serving in combat, diplomatic, and administrative roles. His services inspired many black soldiers, including his son Benjamin Oliver Davis Jr., who later became the first black general in the U.S. Air Force to work through difficulties they faced in the Army. So next time you're on a plane, just think about General Davis and all the amazing things he accomplished. Fact. He began his military career in the trenches of the Spanish-American War as a volunteer grunt. When I'm older, I want to be in the military. <laughs> I thought you said you wanted to be a pilot. Then I'll be a pilot in the military. I want to protect our country. I'm an African-American basketball player. The first Air Jordan shoes were produced for me. Who am I? Michael Jordan. Once upon a time, there was a kid named Michael Jordan who loved playing basketball more than anything else in the world. He practiced every day and worked hard to become the best player he could be. People started noticing Michael's skills and soon he was playing for a college basketball team. Then, he was drafted to play for the Chicago Bulls in the NBA. Michael quickly became one of the greatest basketball players of all time. One of the funniest things about Michael is that he was actually cut from his high school basketball team. But he didn't let that stop him. He just kept practicing and working hard until he became a basketball legend. So, the next time you see someone playing basketball, remember the story of Michael Jordan and always believe in yourself, no matter what anyone else says. There is another fun fact that he planned to become a weatherman if his basketball career did not work out. He had a strain of salmonella named after him, the salmonella mutin. The doctor who named that virus must be his huge fan. Yes, doctor. Stanford Schulman showed his affection for Jordan by naming a dangerous virus after him. This is such a unique way to show love. <laughs> I was a civil rights lawyer before entering politics. At the age of 48, I became the first black American president of the United States. Who am I? Barack Obama. He served as the 44th President of the United States of America from 2009 to 2017, making him the first African American to ever hold the office. During his time as the head of the White House, he was a highly influential politician. He supported same-sex marriage and introduced Obamacare so that the poorest people could have health care. In 2009, he was honored with the Nobel Peace Prize for his efforts to bring peace and equality to the U.S. and the world. Fact, Obama is left-handed. Do you know any other U.S. president who was left-handed? Um, I don't know. We have had eight left-handed presidents in our history. They are James Garfield, Herbert Hoover, Harry Truman, Gerald Ford, Ronald Reagan, George H.W. Bush, Bill Clinton and Barack Obama. All right, kiddos, we're wrapping up our Black History Month celebration. And what a ride it's been. Man, 
I feel like I've learned so much about these amazing black heroes. Me too. They're all so inspiring. I want to be just like them when I grow up. Ah, uh, I see a couple of future heroes in the making. But before we go, let's give a round of applause to these history making legends. Happy Black History Month, kids. Keep on shining like the stars you are. Thank, Thank you, you and see ya. ya.